My name is Shane Gilbert. I work for MY Consulting Group, and I'm just going to be discussing for a few minutes the idea of writing testable code. Many people will talk about the, the real value of having unit tests that cover your code. You can, it can be a real safety net as changes are made going forward. But when you initially write your code, if it's not designed to be tested, then it can make creating and writing those unit tests very, very difficult. So what I'm going to do is show you some code that is not written to be testable, some of the problems that causes, and then we'll switch it up, rewrite it so that it is testable, and then cover a few things that you can where you can go from there. So let's start with an example first of code that is not very testable. So what I have here is just an example program. We'll just run it real quick. Doesn't really do much, but spit out some information to the screen, gives you a total, and then lets you exit out. So um, just briefly, you can see here in the, the main program, it creates a new data service. That data service create, gets some records, and then we cycle through those records summing up the total and then spitting all that out to the screen with console.writeline. Nothing special, definitely better ways to write the code. That's not important. The important is we got some logic and that we're calculating a total. So that would be something we would want to test that it comes up with the correct total as an example. We'll talk about that in a minute. So you notice we knew up this data service here so if we go to the data service all it does is take a parameter to get the number of records you want it uses or creates a data gen record generator which is another class and generates those records for your count um, along with a string description and, and it returns that collection so as we mentioned we have this class the data record generator and it doesn't really do much but create a new record and arbitrarily set some properties values uh, just a calculation here to come up with some weird numbers so you can see that we could easily write a test to come up with the test this main program and make sure hey is it calculating the total correctly as an example the problem with that in this case is we don't have control over this input we have this dependency created on data service and then data service has a dependency on the data record generator if the data record generator is actually pulling this data from a database now you would have an additional dependency on a, a physical instance of SQL Server. So if it you know, had some new connection and a connection string, and then we executed a query or a stored procedure or even a link query, whatever it may be to get data back, well now that data, all of that has to exist for us to test just this one little thing to determine that this calculation is correct. So obviously we've got some issues with this code being testable because of all these dependencies. And that's really the key. We want to figure out a way to be able to actually test just this piece of code and not everything else that this is dependent on. So as I mentioned, we have all these layers or these different classes that are interconnected, they're dependent on each other. And so if you define the word unit for a unit test, that means we're testing one little piece of code at a time. The idea being that if we, pet, if we test all the little pieces and they all work correctly, then we can combine those pieces and be more confident that they work correctly. But with our current design, we really can't unit test. All we can do is at best an integration test of, of the whole system. So we're gonna look out how we fix that. First off, 
anytime you're you have the word new so you're instantiating or you're newing up something you're probably breaking testability unless it's just a uh, a new string or some kind of inherent type in .NET. But anytime we're newing up some type of service, we're creating a dependency and we're not going to be able to work with that. So what we want to do instead is be able to separate these different classes, create some interfaces that get passed into those classes that allow us to kind of tease things apart and actually be able to test each unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would fix this code so that we can do that. Oh, I from Brevity A made these changes offline and we'll just walk through them. In essence, what we did is everything that had a dependency particularly the data service, we pulled that out and added it as a parameter on the constructor. So now our data record generator is generate is instantiated. And then that's passed in on the constructor of the data service. So we just created a private variable and then pass that in on the constructor. Now inside we can use that class. What that allows us to do is we can actually test this class by itself. We can use different various software libraries that will let you mock up this value or this class so that it returns an expected or known value. And then you can test that this code does what it should do given that its dependency does what it should do. And so that allows us to actually test this bit of code. You can take that further if we ended up creating a database connection on this guy. Now we can actually unit test everything else other than this guy. Or we could even, particularly if you're using any framework or an ORM, you can even uh, easily mock up your database connection, uh, the latest versions of Entity Framework do that easily. We'll create an in-memory that you can mock up and then use for testing this as well. And we can just follow the same pattern passing in the data context on the constructor. And then one other small thing that we did is created a new class called calculator. And we just took that bit of logic out of the main program and put it into this method. Then this would allow us again to mock up our data, set of records, and then we can execute this method with a unit test with a known value. And we're actually testing just this one unit or this small bit of code. And that allows us then to actually test the right unit test for this code, thereby this code is now testable. We talked about the different problems. We fixed it by separating into different classes and passing those in on constructors. Now that does get a bit tedious to manage manually, passing everything in on constructors. Uh, and so that's where you would get into dependency injection. And there's a ton of different tools, libraries, uh, with .NET Core, there's some built-in things for dependency injection. Whatever your flavor of choice is, is fine, but you can automate a lot of that dependency uh, with just a little bit of setup code in either your startup or your program uh, CS so that then everything else has what it needs and it gets passed in on the constructor and you can move forward. You can write your unit tests with mocking frameworks. Sometimes it's helpful. I use just concrete classes because this was so simple. But you may also want to create an interface for each of those concrete classes and pass that in. It does make mocking it up a little bit simpler and gives the advantage that if somewhere down the road you need to completely change your implementation, now your classes are dependent on the interface and you can, with dependency injection, swap that out with just a small configuration change. 
So these things help us to write testable code. We can then write covering unit tests and thereby write, hopefully, a, a higher quality code with fewer bugs to, to manage. And in the long run, a bug is much easier, much less expensive to fix in a unit test than when it is discovered in production. So the value of writing testable code and, and then unit test covering your code.